<laughs> Greetings and welcome to the Our Links Podcast Project. My name is Martin Wilsey and I'm your host. And tonight we're talking about all this crazy stuff that authors research on the internet. You know, I have I am still surprised that the FBI hasn't bounded on my door based on some of my queries. It's the same pretty much for all the authors I know. We all come off as either serial killers or just plain crazy people. So tonight we're going to talk about some of the cool stuff that um, we've researched on the, on the internet for part of our books. Um, I guess I'll kick it off. Um, I guess I can start with the murdery ones because it's not all murder in Marty's world. But it's really interesting because uh, one of the things that I um, researched was um, how long you would live with an arterial stab wound. And it's interesting because I wanted to find out where to stab this particular character because he had to live long enough to have a conversation with another character as he bled out. Um, that's just that's just one of the murdery things that I have done. What do you guys? What about you guys? You guys do any murdery queries? Oh, the old classic. I googled, you know, how long does it take for a body to decompose? Mm. I'm sure that's a really classic one. Um, I was doing that for my first novel because a character had died in the previous novel, but in the sequel, the characters had to unearth him to retrieve something from the body that they didn't know was on him. So I had to figure out what the condition of the body would be at that point. And I sort of didn't want it to be too grotesque. So I was hoping that it would be, you know, a decent, a decent level. You know, just right. The right amount of grotesque. You know, it's really interesting because um, carrion animals will clear meat left in the woods fast. Mm. As a deer hunter, it's incredible. I've... Uh, um, uh, I was hunting one time and uh, got two deer at the same time. And uh, I, uh, you know, field cleaned uh, one deer, dragged it, you know, the mile back to, to the road. And by the time I got back to the other, to uh, the second deer, the gut pile from the first one was already gone and they had started working on, this, on the other deer. Wow. And, uh, They'd probably render, you know, a full adult in the woods to a skeleton in a week. Easy. Nature waits nothing. Yeah. Which is yeah good. It's rare that things do survive just fossilization. I mean, that's... I've looked up sword fighting moves um, because I try to choreograph my fights and I want them to be realistic. I, I mean, I, I want them to be action-filled, but at the same time... Um, I want them to feel like something that a real experienced swordsman um, could actually do. And if you're up against a real experienced swordsman, you know, there's, there's none of these five minute, 10 minute duels, right? Somebody dies and somebody dies pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Yep, I've done the same, same thing. Uh, I will say, I'm oh, sorry, Dave. To... Uh, no, go ahead. go ahead. Yeah, no, I would just say that probably my uh, most embarrassing and probably, I don't know if I'm gonna keep uh, certain uh, elements of my, my uh, you know, trust with the government by saying this, but I have researched terrorism a lot. Um, and uh, specifically the Bataclav uh, terrorist attacks in Paris from 2015. I mean, I know that attack and how it went down pretty darn well. I've read a lot of documents in both French and English about it such that, uh, you know, you may be suspicious about why I'm doing that. Yeah, the most murdery uh, thing that I've researched, and I researched it a lot, what, because it was harder to find out than I um, realized going in, um, I had to find out how many megaton nuclear bomb would, would it have to be to destroy Manhattan? Like, to, to level it you know smoking crater and uh um you know and and i've eventually found um the right information i even found a 
an app on the internet that was a simulator. You could select any point in the map in the country and you could select <laughs> how many megatons you wanted. Nice. And it would show you the blast effect area. It would show you we, the, oh, yeah, the that fire. The, uh, that oh, link is out there so that the NSA can get your name. You are now being tracked in a very specialized database and there are people reading all of your communications. Mm, yeah, well. Okay hey. with me? Yeah, and honestly, <laughs> Some of the stuff, I mean, for folks that don't know, I did work for the Naval Research Lab for a number of years, and I can't tell you what I worked on, but I will say this, that uh, yes, we dealt with NSA. So if they're not tracking me by then, I mean, they should be tracking me by now. I'm just saying. So I have a story. This is probably the most terrible thing that I've ever um, um, researched. I have a, a story, a zombie apocalypse, where a, a child is surviving on their own. So I thought maybe... Uh, looking up something like feral children to see how, you know, children might act without uh, parents or adults around might, might be a good idea. And I came across a genie who was a child in 1953, whose parents basically um, locked her in a cabinet under the stairs for the first 12, 13 years of her life. Um, basically, it was, uh, she never learned uh, a language. She was a perfectly normal child who was so abused uh, that she was functionally retarded, even though um, all the mental equipment was there. It was the worst case of child abuse I had ever seen, and none of it. I mean, I had to stop reading it, and I'm, I'm a fairly durable yeah. guy, yeah. and I couldn't use any of it in the story, and it, it was like the, the worst rabbit hole I've ever gone down. Oh, God, yeah, those stories. I was, I was just appalled that somebody could do that to a child. Mm-hmm. The fact that it exists, and we're I not linked to that. Well, you know, going down a rabbit hole is the thing for me because I have to. While I'm working on a project, those rabbit holes are are a trap. Oh, yes, because, man, there's been a couple of rabbit holes that I've gone down that I've spent weeks uh, on. You know, top topics that you'd never expect you could take that long. How to, how to teach an adult how to read. Um, mm -hmm. Beekeeping. That was a big one with me. Mm -hmm. You know, how, uh, how a, um, a farmer runs an apple orchard, which is the thing that led me to beekeeping. <laughs> and, right. and, uh, and it's really interesting, the, all the, the black holes that you can, you can go right. running down. Uh, one of my favorites was um, how to cook with a cauldron. Um, one of those big, you know, cauldrons that were on Bugs Bunny where they would be like, uh, like cooking bugs in and stuff, the, old, the 50 gallon ones. Yeah, that's and industrial. It wasn't at all what I thought how they, how they cooked in one because hmm. I always envisioned them just like with this giant spoon, you know, mm -hmm. stirring stew in there. That's not how they use them at all. It's pretty interesting. Oh, that is interesting. Uh, I'll Google like hypothetical science, like how much content, how concentrated does UV light need to be in order to be weaponized, stuff like that, so I can invent guns and invent laser beams and space travel and all that stuff. So yeah, I mean, that, that's an interesting, that's a, definitely a lighter rabbit hole than David, but definitely thought provoking and inspiring if you write sci-fi. Yeah. Or, or what kind of FTL, faster than light drives are there? Well, right, there aren't any, but you know, you can still well, yeah. find some right. details. Yeah, in fact, all the all the science associates, I like to keep my science pretty accurate in my science fiction novels. Mm -hmm. And I had gone down one of those rabbit holes um, to um, create a create the math associated with uh, spin gravity on space stations because mm -hmm. I wanted. I wanted to figure out in a space station that was a giant wheel that was a kilometer across, how fast does it have to turn in order to generate one G worth of simulated gravity? Mm -hmm. And it was pretty interesting that my research, I found out how to do those calculations and it's 22 yeah, yeah. meters per second. Yeah, that's about right. I mean, I did the same thing with my, uh, which is published in one of our anthologies, the uh, Arcanthropist, because I mean, again, it's a spinning stage, base station. And having studied physics in university, I mean, sort of like, oh yeah, you just need that. It's really interesting. I just read Andy Weir's new book, Hail oh, Mary. 
-hmm. And he has those calculations in there as well for his spaceship. It's very clever um, mm -hmm. the way he simulates gravity in, in his spaceship. And he does it because he has all these instruments that require gravity in order to be able to use them. Very, mm -hmm. very interesting book. I highly recommend that book. So I had this idea that uh, um, I wanted to do a post-apocalyptic set of stories. Um, but our, every time you see an apocalyptic story, it's always an apocalypse in our current world. What I wanted to do was an, was an apocalypse where um, we've spread to the, to the solar system, we've terraformed Mars, we've terraformed Venus and Mercury and the moon even, and then everything falls apart. Everything is smashed, right? And then fast forward a couple thousand years and you're on Mars, the oceans are disappearing, you know, so I was researching things like wet Mars, wet Venus, and you can find a lot of information out there about oh, yeah. what the maps would actually look like under those six mm -hmm. circumstances. When, with the Marises and all that, you know, see where the depressions are. That's Very cool stuff. The stories you'll see someday in the future. <laughs> yes. Looking forward to it, David. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of, uh, a lot of the topics I, I research, I, I even think at the time, oh man, this doesn't look good because I, I, I'll, for one of my novels, I was researching the standard um, kind of procedures for prison guards. Hmm. And uh, I, I'm thinking to myself, somebody's going to think I'm going to break somebody out of prison. And uh, it was that, that kind of stuff is really fun. And it's a definite rabbit hole for me because it really is too much fun. Yeah, I, I will say uh, another thing that um, I probably should not have researched, but I had to, is how to make Hitler sympathetic. What time in his life would he actually be someone that the reader, not knowing it was Hitler, would say, oh, that poor guy, until they find out, oh, man, MG, that was Hitler. And, and where he was going to school and, you know, what he was studying and how he got kicked out and all that stuff. I think a lot of authors have done, you know, the artist angle with him. Wasn't he a starving artist for a while? Yeah, he was. And yeah, I, I you know, had him even drive. You know, that sounds yeah. more like a short story with a, with a twist reveal at the end, uh, as opposed to, like, I wouldn't want to do a novel about Hitler as a good guy. That just oh, it's not a novel. Yeah, no, that's, that's uh, a bad idea. No, no, don't, don't, don't do it. That, that's not no it's just one chapter trust me it's just one chapter <laughs> so another one okay. the pretty specialized um i don't know if you know the the marshall islands for example uh, have an agreement with the u.s that while they're not citizens uh, they have all the rights to come to the u.s and go to university and stuff um, because they have bases uh, they have a base in, in the marshall islands uh, et cetera et cetera so i set my story in the future where the, the islands have finally gone underwater, which means they no longer count as a nation. And so mm -hmm. the story was that they wanted to be a nation again and they had to have an island that was above water. So I learned all about um, trailing hopper dredgers, which is how you would uh, dredge up uh, all the material um, to, to build up an island. Uh, the only problem being that the Marshall Islands, you have to go about oh, 1,200 meters down uh, which is below the crust depth of all modern um, submarines in order to get the material. So I did a lot of research about dredging, uh, submarines, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Fun story though. I will say one, one rabbit hole that I went down, money in the 1800s. OMG, that stuff is weird because there ain't a standard currency. And you know, it's like you had to have these big books to say, oh, Let's see, ah, they is that bank issued it? Well, that one exchange ex exchanges for this much and all of that. And I had to put it in a story that I wrote, which is now available in the Witness Paradox, which uh, you all can- Yeah, I, I've looked up inflation too, like how much would something have to be cost, or what would, you know, what's the normal cost of something in the 70s or versus today, so your, your book is accurate. Right. So, a lot of that stuff, Writer's Digest produced a book uh, on those subjects. In fact, I have I have some in the, in the closet beyond the, uh, Beyond these mesas behind me, um, you know everything you want to know about Victorian England or the 18th century or uh, things of that nature. So, so some of that, if you if you're judicious and you look on Amazon, you can actually buy all the research you need. 
I did all this research on riverboats and I never have been used it in my story. I mean, sometimes you go down these rabbit holes designing something and then you don't even need it. Yeah, I would say fully half of the rabbit holes I go down um, turn out not to be of use. Yeah. But it's still fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you learn a lot as an author. You learn. In, in, fact, in fact, it's one of the favorite, my favorite things to, to be able to go out there and, and really be into researching a specific topic and stuff is really great. It's uh, it's big, big fun to be able to do it and then use what you learn. That's uh, even better. One of the quotes that I've, I've published out there is uh, um, being a writer is like having homework for the rest of your life. <laughs> yep. of writing activities. But part of that's the research. Like one of the fun things about being a writer is you you get to keep doing self-directed learning on anything that, that, that piques your interest or might be useful in a story. Very yeah, good. Uh, and and even uh, I'm also an editor. So I find myself also researching subjects on behalf of some of the people contributing stories to my anthologies. So sometimes I'm like, okay, you're writing an Arthur an Arthurian story, and I don't think the legend matches what you're describing. I think we yeah, have, you know, yeah, know your topics and do some research. That's for yeah. Sure. I, in fact, I have uh, uh, read books that I wish the authors had done more research mm -hmm. on a sp specific topics. We talk about this in our writers group all the time. If you're gonna write anything about horses, do a metric ton of research or right. sailboats or right. uh, guns or um, medicine, chemistry, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Don't get it wrong because people will you know, it'll just completely drop folks out of the story if, yep. you, if you get find it wrong. A, and if you can find a Shmi to beta read, find that Shmi because the Shmi will help you, the subject matter expert. Yeah, and uh, it's it's pretty interesting when uh, um, I'll write something that I just casually, you know, think I know an adequate amount and I'll insert something and then somebody will say, dude, did you know? You know, it's there's uh, uh, enough people out there that'll catch crap for you that uh, it's really helpful. Uh, but when you do your research, it shows a lot in your book. Um, but the one thing you got to keep in mind is don't put all your research in your book <laughs> because I tend to do that. And uh, then I have to cut it out later and it just wastes a lot of time. I mean, finding a SME earlier. And I find it's also a good way to, to meet people um, mm -hmm. because there's nothing that an expert on some kind of field um, wants to do more than talk to somebody who is interested in their field. And it, it, as soon as you get off the track, you are legitimately interested in their field, whether it's you know shooting arrows on horseback or horseback riding or sailing or guns or whatever. Man, these people, you buy them a beer or something, they will lean over backwards to help you out. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah, good. it's fun. It's amazing what people do to uh, get in the acknowledgments of your book. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll say one other interesting thing that I've researched is uh, how to set fire to a theater in the 1800s because they didn't have uh, incandescent light bulbs. So you had to use candles to light the stage. And what problems would that cause if you didn't have... Uh, lights trying to imagine what it would be like to watch a, a play that was driven by candlelight that makes sense yeah I've, I've googled a lot of like you know when was this thing invented to make sure that i'm not using you know an invention mm -hmm. in a time period book that hasn't come out yet yeah, yeah i slammed one time for uh, having concrete in the medieval-ish type uh, fantasy story mm -hmm. right back and said you know that concrete was invented by the romans yep well before medieval times. So right. it's easy to produce and, and has a historical basis. Absolutely. I mean, the, the Pantheon right there, the oldest uh, concrete dome right in Rome. Been there. Lovely, lovely place. Hey, I've been to the full-size replica of the Parthenon in Nashville. <laughs> nice. 
It's great. If you're ever in Nashville, go see it. It's unexpected. Yeah, take a trip out there, y'all. Trust me. It's a good idea. And if you're doing it for research for your novel, it's tax deductible. Exactly. Um, I've also researched space habitats. Uh, and I don't mean just space stations, but I mean, um, you know, Dyson spheres, which would be a sphere that encloses an entire sun and has the, uh, the, the room of billions of Earths or uh, ring world. But there are smaller versions of those too. Um, you could put them, uh, you, know, you could put a, a, a smaller ring world in, in orbit around Jupiter and have, you know, um, have high walls that keep the air in and have, have something that's a thousand miles across um, that has the land area of like India. Mm -hmm. uh, something like that in, in a far future science fiction story is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I find Dyson spheres a fascinating topic because it's not like you can, you can rotate them. How do you do generate the gravity? I mean, if you don't have anti-grav, if you can just go with the rules of physics as we have them today, which we could do a Dyson sphere with the physics we have today, how you get all that material? It'd probably be a net. Yeah, it's the material quantity that is yeah. of consequence. Is why I the yeah. fact that you are um, completely circumnavigating a massive continuous set of nuclear explosions exactly. is also problematic. Exactly. Um, you could do it around a, a red dwarf star, uh, but it would be a lot more active than our sun. And you could have problems, but you put solar panels all beneath your feet instead of above your head. Fascinating topic, guys. Yep, fascinating. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, topics associated with the science of space travel and space itself that I have read a metric ton about. And uh, it, it makes the writing of science fiction a lot easier if you actually know what a Lagrange point is or you mm -hmm. know, actually know how gravity works. I was surprised to discover that 90% of the people on this planet you know, actually don't really understand how gravity works. And um, it's, it's fascinating to me. Um, yeah, space-time metric and the lovely, lovely tensors in the good old Einstein's equation. Well, the anymore. interesting thing is, if you quiz 10 people, nine of them will say that those people up in the space station are floating around because there's no gravity. No, they're falling. Oh, well, they're it's, falling. It's completely Constant wrong. Free they're, they're Constant free fall. Fall. The, the concept of free fall alone is pretty interesting because mm -hmm. there's a metric ton of gravity up there. Oh, yeah. So, in fact, if you were in a fixed point above the Earth that stayed that fixed, much different. you would sense the gravity. Yeah, it wouldn't be much different than the surface. Yeah. Although the gravity is slightly different at sea level than it is at the top of Mount Everest. Yeah. Oh, it's measurably different, yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. It's, but uh, you could also see your watches, uh, you know, on the space station. You can see your watches ever so slightly in atomic clock, uh, uh, you know, levels of measurement. Yeah. Ah, time dilation. If, old Einstein again. Yeah, you talk about time dilation with most people and they just don't get it because they think mm -hmm. time is, you fixed. know, fixed mm -hmm. and it's not. Mm -hmm. It's uh, crazy topics. Yeah. But as your relevant uh, physics shmi, I do know how to do Lorentz contractors and I can do those equations for you, my friends. Yeah, uh, I was just talking with Jeffrey today. I had picked the name of a ship for a story I'm working on. And um, uh, we, were, we were talking about the atomic structure of- uh, Yeah, right. To help name this ship. And uh, even that kind of research is a lot of fun. Yeah. And, you know, that was a rabbit hole. I found an, an online um, periodic table. That's awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I really wish when I was in school, I had resources like that. Right. I mean, we had one page with all the esoteric annotations, and that's it. Granted, you'd still get those all over the place. Oh, but yeah. uh, what you can do now with, you know, point and click, and it's mm -hmm. it gives you it instantly, it makes research super easy. Of course, we're one rabbit hole I went down that I never actually executed is I would love to have a great big grid of all the elements, you know, um, just on my wall. Right? Yeah, you could probably buy that. If you did your research, you could probably find a, yeah. a wallpaper of periodic tables. Well, no, I mean the actual elements. The actual elements in little glass vials. 
Oh. Yeah. yeah, not so much. I, that's a hard one. Some of those one. elements, you know, in my house. Yeah, well, I mean, the ones that are radioactive, you want to, uh, technium, yeah, I can give that one a miss. Even sodium, technium. forget yeah. that. I'm not having any quantum, quantum of uh, pure sodium in my house. Yeah, that, that'll explode something fierce. And in fact, the higher up you go, francium, not that you could get francium, cesium, you can get cesium. Oof, you think... Uh, sodium explodes. Oof, you should see. I think season. we're getting a little off topic. Yes, we are. are. We are. But, uh, <laughs> that's just how re how research rolls. You go into rabbit hole. Yeah. So, so any any other closing thoughts, you guys? Um, I don't think you, I don't think you can possibly run out of topics to uh, to research or to to go down rabbit holes for. It sometimes you just sort of have to limit yourself and go. I have now discovered enough about. You know, Arthurian legend or whatever for my story, I need to stop digging. Yeah, and one other point I want to make, I think we touched on it earlier, talk to people. And yeah. one of the great people to talk about, talk with, is a librarian. They yeah. have a research desk at the library. Yeah. And uh, a research librarian has a metric ton of info in their heads about a bazillion esoteric things mm -hmm. nothing else they can get you started on something mm -hmm. if you don't know where to start they will and tell I, you what oh, and my final comment um other than i hope this has given people uh, an interesting alternative reason to clear your search histories um <laughs> after after you've been writing but i'll end with a little joke um so there was a, a married couple and uh, a, a woman the, their wife received a package in the mail uh, that was from, you know, bookseller, and she opened it up, and, and it said, how to kill your wife and get away with it, and she was quite concerned, and she called her aunt and said, I'm going to move in with you, and called a lawyer for a divorce, and called the police, and said, you know, we got to, we got to look into this, and a couple of days went by, and another package came, and she opened up, and it was novel writing for dummies, so uh, not every, not every uh, strange and concerning uh, research that, that your partner is doing or your friend is doing uh, is, is literal. We are, we are not serial killers, but, right. uh, but we do have untamed minds, and that's why we are uh, that's why we're writers, and maybe yeah. you, why you're a writer who's listening. So and that's will, my closing statement, I guess. I will say this as final is that, uh, yes, you can go down these rabbit holes. Great Wikipedias, great uh, Google searches, and don't forget, any of these videos like how, what happens when you put cesium in water on YouTube? Find it out, but we'll see you in about a year. <laughs> okay, guys. We'll see you next week for another fine episode of the Owlings Podcast. Finally structured, my friend.